There are many situations which may require you to simultaneously iterate over the entries of a map or dictionary. In other words, loop over the keys and the values at the same time. A basic example of such a situation is say you have a map of unique identifiers to person objects, and for debug purposes, you want to print out each UUID person pair. I've gone ahead and prepared this code filled with a few default values as well as a main method where we can write our loop. Now, if you're using Java 8 or greater, the easiest way to go about this is as follows. First, start with your map variable name, in my case, people, and just like you would use any other method, add a dot, then type the method name, in our case, for each. This method accepts a function which takes two parameters, the first one matching the type of the keys and the second one matching the type of the values. Whatever function we pass in with those appropriate parameters, the method will call it for each key value pair in the map, passing in both the key and the value, which in the func function implementation we can use to implement our logic. To pass in this function, we will utilize the lambda syntax, first declaring names for the two parameters. Since we have multiple parameters though, we must surround them in parentheses. Keep in mind, you do not need to specify the types of these as it is inferred from the generic types of the map. So the common standard to name these k and v, or key and value, but you may name them whatever fits. For example, in this case, I can name them u for uid and p for person. Once you have specified the matching parameters, we use an arrow composed of a dash and a greater than sign to create our lambda. Then, if you have a simple one-line statement, you can simply specify that statement. Otherwise, you can add brackets like any, no any other normal code block. Within that statement or the code block, you may access the key and value arguments you defined. Well, in our case, we only need one statement. I will keep the braces for flexibility later on if we need to add farther functionality. Now, I can add the print statement, printing out the UUID, a colon, and the person's name. Now that I've added the statement, if we run it, we can see the map entries are printed out with the UUID and the person name present. What if I need to keep track of some external state though? For example, every time I find a person with a name which contains the letter O, I need to increment an integer to print out afterwards. If I add an integer, count and set it equal to zero, and attempt to increment it in this for each lambda body, you can see my IDE gives me an error, as any variable used in a lambda expression must be final or at least effectively final. We could technically use an atomic integer in this case, but the more appropriate solution here, I believe, and also the solution you have to use if you are not able to use Java 8 or greater, is to fall back and simply use a traditional for loop. It's not as expressive or quick to write as the for each lambda, but it's still simple to read and not too much extra to write. Essentially what this looks like is your everyday for each loop, but with some minor extra steps involved. So we write out for, then declare our type, which in this case is map dot entry with generic type parameters matching your map. In this case, UUID and person then a name for each entry, such as entry, then a colon, and then finally what we want to iterate over. In this case, as you can see, we cannot simply iterate over the map, but first must retrieve an entry set from the map. If you think this type looks long, it kind of is, but luckily, if you're using Java 11 or greater, you can instead use the var keyword which will infer the type based off your map's entry sets types. But both work, and some people prefer to always be explicit with types. Now, we can add brackets, and inside the brackets, we can print out our entries, similar to last time. Instead, using the map.entry method get key to get the UUID, print, it, print out our colon, and using the entry method got, get value to get our person, to, so we can print out person's name. Then, to implement our count logic, we can add an if statement, checking if the person's name contains a lowercase o. And within that if statement, incrementing the count variable. And as you can see, there are no errors this time, and we can freely increment non-final variable, or yeah, we can freely access non-final variables. Overall, this is a bit more verbose than the functional for each approach, but as you can see, 
we can freely increment our count variable, plus our outdated Java friends aren't left behind either. Finally, we can add a print statement outside of our loop to print out the count. And if we run it, we can see that the count should be three due to the three names, Allo, Gordon, and Parlo, including the lowercase o. Keep in mind, there are many other different ways to go about this, especially if you only need the keys or you only need the values, but these are the simplest methods of going about this and should cover many of your needs. If you have a question or any concerns, please reach out to me in the comments or on my Discord and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for learning with me. Bye.